So how are you doing today? Doing well, how are you? Very well. Very I like well. playing the multiple stages here. Yes, yes. So we played um, a Gladden House session earlier, mm -hmm. and then the fourth stage. And then tomorrow, Kyle, Mike, and I are going to do a No-Fi Cabin set. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Because there's no electric instruments. So I know. Yep. I'm gonna play violin, and Kyle's gonna play acoustic guitar, and then I think Mike has auxiliary percussion. Okay. Speaking of violin, yes, yes. When did you start playing the violin? When I was three. So you were like, what? Uh, so 24 years ago. So you're a master at violin, right? <laughs> I say 10,000 hours. I think I put them in probably by this time. <laughs> I don't know. I went to school for it, so yeah, yeah. That's like my first main instrument, um, and then also how I started in the band. Well, with you playing with you, um, and then after that moved to keyboard and then guitar. But yeah, it's been kind of like a progression. And what was the first song you played on the violin? Oh, the hit single "Hot Cross Buns," and then after that. <laughs> Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Uh, for okay. sure, for sure. Okay, I did the so. Suzuki program, so they start you out with like hot cross buns and then you play with like a you don't even get to, you don't get a real box, a tissue box. You get a tissue right. box so you can figure out how to hold it for little people. Uh, and then okay. you get like a, a little baby violin, it's like this big. And then you do um you have to play the twinkle variations, there's five of them, you have to play them each a hundred times. And then you move on. Twinkle twinkle yeah. five hundred times. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's and right. what do you think of electric violins? Well, I have one, um, and I, I didn't bring it uh, to today, yeah, but we're going to try and incorporate it. We sometimes do duo sets, so I'll use the electric file in there and just plug it into my board, so we're going to kind of figure out how to incorporate it into some of our sets. But um, I like the electric violin when there are more people in the band playing. I prefer that because um, it doesn't feedback the same way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, I, uh, it's less of a setup than my acoustic violin and trying to mic it and get a pickup for it and all that kind of stuff. I just like to keep them separate. And that way you can kind of like run it through pedals safely and not mess anything up on it. You ever heard of the Great Cat? No. Great Cat is a constant, she was a constant violinist. Then she heard Metallica. Wow. And now she's one of the top shredded guitars. Whoa. Guitars. What? <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's cool, man. That's really mm -hmm. cool. I would love a gig like that. Yeah. Just playing with rock bands all the time. That's what I want. I want to get into it. But no. I haven't figured it out. I haven't figured it out yet. So, someday. Okay. And yourself. When did you start playing the guitar? I started playing guitar when I was 13. Yeah. So, how long? so not that long ago. A couple of years, right? Yeah, a couple of years. Uh, what, 14 years ago? Yeah. So, yeah. And you remember, do you remember your first gig you played with? My first gig I played, oh, I think it was in a bar. Oh, I don't remember what the bar was called. It was not, it was in Delaware, Ohio. Delaware. It's not around anymore, but there was these old rocker cats that would play in there. Just play the classic hits, you know, like Tom Petty and Sorry. Um, and yeah, we played with them. That was probably the first gig, yeah. But wait, do you ever get confused with the, do people ever confuse it with a baseball player? No, they confused me with the a soccer, soccer player. player. Oh, okay, because there's a baseball player with your same name too. What? Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Good for him, he's making more money. <laughs> I think he's on uh, in Baltimore or Philly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, when I Googled you, that what came up first. Hi! Okay. You Googled him? Yeah. Oh my god, what an honor. Yeah. Somebody Googled you. Oh Ooh, my man. god. So, how did you get the name of your band? Uh, we were kind of just, uh, yeah. Well, like, we were kind of just. It was way. It was way back when we had a different, completely different lineup, and, and we, we we were coming up with. Um, we were trying to come up with a band name, and we came idioms, up with this, yeah, like that. We were looking at idioms. It's hard because you think you find a good one, and then it was a band from the '80s, or you know, it already exists, but they're you know mm -hmm. on a hiatus, yeah. whatever. So, yeah, um, we were messing with the name the Cardinal Sins, right. and someone misread it as cordial, and we were like, well, that's a lot better. So, so we took it. That's that makes sense. It. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you remember this date? Think hard. I did some searching on you guys. Oh, God. May 15th, 2014. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Woodland Tavern. Oh, Woodland's Tavern. With the Warren Flints, I think. The Warren, remember, we played the Warren Flints and... Uh, 
Friendly Foe. I don't remember. Maybe. Were we playing? Why? What's well, that wasn't your first gig, was it? No. It's okay. Oh, yeah. oh God. <laughs> yeah, we've had kind of like a weird history. It's been up and down, yeah. I've deleted stuff. All right. <laughs> no, my face stuff. Was there anything in my stuff? No. Oh, no. Did you have before it disappeared? No. Yeah, we didn't. We because we just started our. Uh, Facebook page, I don't even know, in 2000. Well, okay, so the whole thing is that Corey had this band going before I was even in it. Mm -hmm. So, and then it changed, like the iterations of it changed, and we had somebody else who was like kind of writing songs, and we came up with this whole album, and then we kind of scrapped that after we released it because we felt like it didn't represent what we really wanted. So, our first released material is 2016, but we were active before then, for sure. Yeah. All right. So, doesn't surprise me, I know what show you're talking about, I don't, I vaguely remember it. I, mean, I feel like the more Flints were playing, it was when we played in the same crowd as like, you know, a lot of bands that were kind of coming up at the same time in Columbus. So there was that network of people. That's a throwback. Yeah. So I Googled you guys, you got some good, good questions here. And how do you guys write songs together? Um, well, you would help. Uh, I mean, I don't think there's a real process behind it. I think, um, what? at least for me and you, like, oh. it's more of just, we kind of write riffs, and, or we, she writes vocal melodies, or, or whatever, and then we kind of sit with each other and ex try and expand on it as yeah. best as we can. Yeah. And once it gets to a certain point, and we have the vocal melody in place, um, we kind of bring it to the rest of the dudes and see what they can do with it, or, you know, yeah. It's kind of how it works for the most part. The, the most, I think we've come, we've tried to get it to like a more efficient process where we realize that like it's better off if we try and come up with like a vision for the song before we have everybody chime in okay. and just say, hey, we're kind of going for, you know, a song like whatever artist, whatever we're feeling inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times it helps that we just play with, we're playing with people who pick up on what we're trying to get across pretty easily, so that's good. Um, but yeah, so Corey and I will, well, we do a lot of phone demoing. <laughs> we got like new demo number 17 or whatever on our phones, and then we'll share those melody ideas and then kind of work them out together. And then we just, we like to come up with just like a verse idea or like a chorus idea and then show everybody and kind of go from there. We don't like... We don't always flush out. I mean, there have been a few songs, some new songs, where I've kind of flushed out a lot of the ideas with the vocal melodies yeah. up front, but it doesn't always happen that way. By the way, you guys did in the 102.5 holiday. Yeah. So did you win that, or what was the deal with that? Well, wait, wait. Are you talking about the holiday showcase? The local like, holiday showcase. Yeah. Way, way back when. Yeah. Uh, November 25th, yeah. 2015. Oh my god, you're in the archives. No, we did not. Yeah. We didn't get that. Both, we did it two times. Two votes, yeah. We did it two times. Yeah. yeah it's, pretty, uh, it's kind of a heartbreaker. <laughs> but, but then they kind of got rid of that process mm -hmm. for the last few um, shows that they've done. So we just played CD 1025 Day. And right. it's the same idea where they have a local opener, but they just like pick somebody. So the last few, they've just done it that way. Okay. And we got it. So. <laughs> and you did open for Flaming Lips, I saw. Oh yeah, we did Bellwether last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We did Bellwether. Um... I was there! <gasps> you were? Oh. What? I was... Which day did you go? Did you go both days? I did. Okay. No, I went second day. I didn't go first we, day. We went to... We played the second oh, day. Oh, I was there It's both days. I was there we played days. really early. Mm -hmm. We were like the opener on that stage. Right? Yeah. Right. I think I saw... I think I saw you. What? I think I... I think I did. Like, it's all coming back. It's all coming back, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna ask you about bands in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Just give me a little statement about each of these bands from Columbus. Oh, okay. specific bands? Sure. Yes. 21 Pilots. Oh, well. Oh, oh goodbye. <laughs> uh, they're not, I think they're from Westerville, Ohio, and they live in LA now. Right. They come back and they sell out places left and right. But I mean, it's not like our style, our favorite style of music, I would say. I think um, it's, it's cool that they are famous, I guess. I don't mainstream know. pop. They don't really do anything, they haven't really done anything for the Columbus community. Mm -hmm. 
So it's just like. Uh, cool. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't know if we can be a good judge of that because I really don't pay attention to what they do a lot. You, you know what I mean? Like I have students who really like their music. I think people do reference them as like, oh, they're from Columbus because technically they are. Um, but I also. Did they have local openers when they played here the last few times? Because that's cool. I think they, they that. did have one or two local openers. Which I appreciate cool. that. You know, I, that's, I, that's I do cool, appreciate you know? that. Yeah. Um, it's just not like it's just not my favorite this style. What about Rascal Flat? Okay. Rascal also, Flats. they're from Columbus. Yes. Okay. I was pretty hip with Rascal Flats in like eighth grade. Okay. I, I did sing some of their songs. I don't know anything about Rascal. Flats. I did go to country jams in eighth grade when it was okay. like still around and Rascal. Flats. Plus, I think it was at Germania for theater when that was still around, and I saw them play. Um, I mean, I feel like they're pretty good at what they do. You know, they had some jams back mm -hmm. in the day, but I forgot they were from Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> and one last person, Howard Jones from Kill Switch Engage. Whoa! Wow. I didn't know he was from Columbus. Yes, he Dude, is. Uh, what? He's the singer. singer yes. Yeah, he's, he's good, man. He's good. What's the one song that I that was like your big thing? Like, come on, man. Yeah. I don't know what you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, only know, I only knew one song by them. Also in the eighth grade. Uh, it was on yeah. CD. No, they're, they're good. You like them? They're fine. These are CD, not a track. No. Uh, think, yeah, it was CD. I think these are really major artists from Columbus that no. don't have anything to do with Columbus anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I guess, yeah, but metal, like metal stuff, is a pretty big thing in Columbus for a while. Well, so I could imagine Kill Switch being. They just played um, Sonic Temple. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, did oh, okay. They? Sonic Temple. Well, who knows? Maybe they got rained out for all we know. Did you go to that? I think I was there. Okay. Oh, did you go? What do you think? I was there all three days. Did you like we it? So I did. Yeah. Yeah. We went. Before the third day where it rained. Yeah. And yes. it kind of tornado winds and all that. Yes. Yeah, we went that. Yeah. We, we tried to go. That was the Foo Fighters day, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, we went. We tried to go that day. So. Think Foo saw, Fighters and Joe Jones. Yes. Fighters, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was good. It was good. I'm into it. What's classic rock, in your opinion? Classic Tom Petty. rock is. <laughs> yeah. It's anything from the late 60s to late 70s, I would say. Uh. But it has to be a specific. I mean, there's like a classic no, rock. No, Pacific. Just you could say AC/DC. You could say. Uh, oh, true. You could kiss. say. No, I wouldn't even kiss this. I guess the late seventies, maybe. But you could say AC/DC. You could say Led Zeppelin. You could say fucking Pink Floyd. You could say any Tom Petty. Any Steve Miller Band. Steve Miller Band. Yeah, it's all like classic. But not rock. Bob Dylan. Yeah. And not Johnny Mitchell. I wouldn't ever call Bob Dylan rock. What? He did have his rock stage. He had his rock stage, but like as far as his whole career goes, I, I wouldn't call him a rock star. medium hates charts. Bob Dylan, so I don't hate Bob okay. Dylan. I'm just not a guy that's gonna like worship him. Uh, I know. Yeah. He did have a rock stage, though. I'm 50 I, 50 on Bob Dylan. He has a, he has a big <laughs> Most people hate. I, it's the unpopular opinion. What do you want? I'm gonna go with Tom Petty. That to me is like a good. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep rolling with that one. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Uh, also, Aerosmith. I mean, right. mm -hmm. That's one where I thought I, Corey real, made me realize that I like a lot of Aerosmith songs, and I didn't know that originally. So. You ever seen Aerosmith at concert? No. No. Why not? No. Well, I didn't even know that I liked their music until Corey'd be like, "Yeah, this so song's like Aerosmith." I'm like, <laughs> every time it happens, I'm like, "Well, I didn't know this is Aerosmith." I'm going to ask you guys about couples in rock, or oh. couples in music. Ooh, okay. not Stevie Nicks. No, I'm not going to even get to Stevie. <laughs> but I'm going to ask Ike and Tina Turner. Okay. It's a volatile one. I guess I don't know a whole lot about their relationship slash career. Falling out. <laughs> but I heard it wasn't great, so... That's what, I, that's what I know about it. Okay, John and Yoko. John and Yoko? Uh-oh, mm. Corey, here we go. Corey feels really... He has I'm a sensitive, big John Lennon he has fan, sensitive opinion I'm a big that. Beatles fan. Mm -hmm. And so, I think yeah. that... I can't blame it all on Yoko, no? <laughs> I, I don't think that... I think that it was going to happen no matter what. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, what do you want, dude? They gave you, like, everything you could possibly want. Right. Record after record, hit after hit after hit. And it's just like, okay, give them a break, man. Like, dude, they're going to break up. Box. They're all going to go and do their own things, which they all put out great albums. Right. Except for Ringo. He's kind of iffy. But, well, Ringo uh, has his all-star band. He's, he's, he's got been a little iffy the whole band. time, he's, I feel like, though. You know, know what I mean? Um, but I think Yoko Ono... 
she's a cool artist. I, mean, I cannot get behind her vocals. It is just not for me. <laughs> that, what about their relationship? <laughs> yeah. I think the relationship was... It seemed okay. It was good for what it was. It is what it is, you know? What are you going to say? Jack White and Meg White. <sighs> <laughs> you really just freaking. You know, wow, I was I not expecting this interview to be. Jack White and Meg White, I've read a lot of interesting things about that. Let's just say that bizarre? I don't for know. For a long I have time. No what, I, what, what are we even. I don't even know what to talk about. I don't, for a long what time, is they acted like brother and sister. <laughs> they can't they can't know. Know. But they're actually married, I guess. Yeah. They were actually married. But they, but they did brother and sister so we could ask questions. Okay, yes, they is that, so is, are you saying authoritatively, like, that is the reason why? We know for sure. Maybe. <laughs> I, think, um, I don't know anything about their actual relationship. Jack White. Uh, I went through a really big White Stripes phase. I love the White Stripes. I went Musically, very good. through a really big Racketeers phase. I love the Racketeers. Yeah. The solo stuff, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of solo stuff. It's kind of like... Woo. See, I'm getting good questions here. You are. I did you're Google you good. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know. I think... I don't know. I don't know what the relationship was like was like, but I know Meg White, her <coughs> drum parts are great, but I don't think she wrote the drum parts. Right. And, He's uh, obviously the dominant person. You know, I mean, Jack White's a drummer. He wasn't like, he married this woman and maybe she didn't play drums, but he's like, look, I can write these super simple parts, you can play them, boom. Problem solved. Hit singles. Wait a second, we just, we start. All right. Digital music. Oh. Is, does it help you, well, do you think people should actually have an album still, or actually get this and download? Let's talk to Jerry about this right um, I think if you have a record label behind you, and you have, they're giving you money, or, okay, let's just put it this way. If you have money to put towards promotion of a full album, do it. And you're able to set up a tour around it. You know, you have to have a label, maybe, but... Um, but I, remember, when record company's giving you money for an album, that's right. a loan. Yeah, I know. I say that all the time. I'm like, remember to look. So that's why I want to rephrase if it's if you have money to do it and you have money to put promotional things into it, then I say go for it. But I also feel like you have to be able to commit. In my mind, I would want to commit a whole year just to touring on that album. You know what I mean? So treating it as a cycle. Because um, I feel like it's a lot of work to put into a whole album and then just to go release something else afterwards. So we kind of, I don't know, it depends. We like to just do small, small little things, obviously. Okay. okay, two more questions here. Okay, sure. Tell me. What are you going to be doing five years from now, you think? What are we going to be doing five years from now? Yes. Like best case scenario? Yes. <laughs> best case scenario, <laughs> touring, touring a lot, yeah. On support tours and, and playing. Like getting it. put in front of a larger audience that we have crossover fans, you know, that's I mean. Hopefully we'll have enough support that we can release an album that we want to release an album. And tour, 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 tour. Alright. So we like that. And touring's not making us grow. Alright. And, and my career goal is to have my dog on tour. I'm saying it in writing. Oh, okay. Our dog's on tour would be cool. That'd be good. That'd be good. <laughs> and last question, anything for your fans you want to say? Any closing statement? Um, Thank you for liking us. Yes, we really appreciate your support and dedication to our music. Yes. And we have uh, new releases <laughs> coming to this fall. So. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank yeah. you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. It's our pleasure. Yes.